What's up guys, Meredith with ExtremeTerrain.com and today we're checking out the Bilstein 0.7 to 3.5 inch BA6112 front suspension leveling kit fitting all 2010 through 2024 Toyota 4Runners. Now if you're in search of a way to get some extra height for the front of your 4Runner and a whole lot of performance for your day to day, but especially when you're out on the dirt, this is going to be a great addition to your build. Not only will these be great to improve your ride quality if you're currently dealing with worn, squishy, or clunky shocks up front, but this will lift the front of your 4Runner to your preferred height, allowing adjustments so you can fit up to a 33 inch tire, get some better clearance in the front, and improve your off-road driving. This will feature multiple grooves on the shock body here that's going to house this collar and allow you to adjust your suspension to different heights from a seventh of an inch all the way up to three and a half inches of lift in the front with multiple settings in the middle. Now that's going to allow you to fit a more aggressive tire. Like I said, at the highest height, you will be able to fit a 33, but it is going to depend on your lift height. So just keep that in mind. And the front of your 4Runner will be able to clear obstacles that you may have otherwise come in contact with at your stock height, increasing your approach angles. In addition to the height you're getting, this is going to be an improvement with a monotube gas charge shock, which will allow a more responsive ride with faster dampening performance and will even have velocity sensitive digressive valving to adapt to whatever terrain that you're on. So if you're taking your forerunner from the dirt to the pavement to gravel back to dirt, this is going to adapt for all of that, keeping you comfortable and offering you the best performance possible. These are going to be incredibly durable with a huge 60 millimeter alloy zinc plated shock body with a clear coat on top to prevent any rusting or corrosion. The shock will also feature a chrome hardened 14 millimeter alloy piston rod to be able to take some abuse and hold up well, especially uh, paired with the gas charged monotube construction that will greatly reduce shock fade, which is that squishiness that forms in the shock from being worked too hard. Now this will eliminate that happening and lengthen the lifespan of the shock tenfold compared to the factory ones. This will also come with tough bushings down at the bottom. You are going to get your powder coated springs here uh, as well as all of the hardware needed in order to make this install fairly straightforward. This will be pricier for a leveling kit coming in at about $875, but for good reason considering that you're getting multiple heights and upgraded shocks with this. Now, in comparing to other choices on the page, this is well built and is going to be Bilstein's bigger choice of shocks compared to their other 5100 series line. So if you're looking for a step up in performance and are willing to pay the extra couple bucks for a shock that's going to offer a bit more out of the construction, this may be for you. Now, other less expensive choices may not include the adjustability and may even just be a factory style replacement or a spacer in comparison to this, which is going to give you better ride quality than stock and allow you to adjust your heights to multiple options, not just one or two, making it an all around great choice if performance is what you're looking for. Install will be a three out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking about two hours, so I would recommend having the correct setup with a spring compressor and the right experience to do this. Otherwise, I would take your uh, lift kit and your forerunner to a local trusted shop. Now, at this point though, we can head over to our shop and check out a detailed breakdown, whether you are doing this yourself or you're just curious about how to get these onto your forerunner. So if that is gonna wrap it up for my review, let's go ahead and jump into the install. For this install, you need a hammer, a 3 8 impact, 3 8 ratchet, 3 8 extension, a 19 swivel, 18, 17, 12, 10 millimeter socket, a 17, 18, 19, 14, 8, and 7 millimeter wrench, snap ring pliers, and needle nose pliers. And also not shown would be a spring compressor. All right, today we're going to be installing a leveling kit on our 4Runner. But first, we're going to watch a quick video how to uninstall the stock strut, and then we'll come back here to install the new system. So the first thing we're going to do is disconnect our brake line brackets. The one on the upper control arm is a 10 millimeter bolt, whereas the one in the knuckle is a 12. So I've got my 10 millimeter socket to start on the upper control arm. So let's get that out. So first, we'll get our upper control arm bracket. So we'll take that 10 millimeter socket to remove this bolt. Then we can pop our bracket out of the way, throw our bolt back, and then we'll switch to our 12 millimeter socket for the brake line bracket and our knuckle. And 
And then same thing, pop that out of the way and thread our bolt back in. Next, we can remove the 18 millimeter nut holding our sway bar end link in. So we'll grab an 18 millimeter socket to pop that off. Next, we can disconnect our tie rod end. So we'll grab a pair of needle nose pliers to bend back our cotter pin. Next, we can take our 19 millimeter socket to remove our nut. Next, we can grab a hammer to tap on the side of the knuckle here to break our ball joint free. Now, once we get this to pop free, we can remove our nut and get our tie rod end off to the side. Next, we can loosen up our lower strut mount so we'll grab a 19 millimeter socket for our nut side and a 19 millimeter wrench for our bolt side to loosen that up. Next, we can disconnect our upper control arm ball joint from our knuckle. So we'll grab a pair of needle nose pliers for our cotter pin. And then we can grab our 19 millimeter socket to loosen up our nut. And now with our nut loosened up, we can do the same thing where we're smacking the side of the knuckle. Make sure you leave that nut on so your whole knuckle doesn't go flying once it pops free. And then we'll just pull down on our upper control arm and fully remove our castle nut. Next, we can come to the top of our strut tower and remove our three nuts. So we'll take a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench to do so. I'm gonna end up leaving this nut on there hand tight until we're ready to remove our strut. Now at this point, you can repeat that entire process on the other side because we do need to be able to move our sway bar to get our strut out. Next, we can remove our lower strut bolt. And then we can go back up top and remove that nut. And then we can pull our sway bar up and out of the way. And then once you have your strut out on one side, you can do that same thing on the other side. All right, now that we got our new strut out here, so what we're going to do is we're gonna grab our snap ring pliers. And what we need to do is move this snap ring up or down. It's all set all the way to the lowest right now. We're gonna put it all the way at the top for our maximum lift. So we're just gonna grab snap ring pliers, spread it apart, and just move it all the way up. All right, make sure it's secured in place. And then after that, we can go to our spring compressor to swap over our top mount from our stock strut. All right, now that we're at the spring compressor, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up and take tension off of our spring by compressing it down. Then we're gonna take our top nut off with our 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench and a seven millimeter wrench to, to hold the top of it so it doesn't spin. Once we get all that off, we can take our strut out, our spring off, and swap our top mount over to our new system. All right, now we can drop our strut out. And we can decompress our spring so we can take our top mount off. All right, and then just pop it straight off and we can swap it over to the new one. All right, now we're gonna assemble our new strut. First, we're gonna start with our spring base. You will see the groove that the snap arm goes in where this flat part will sit up top. We have our collar next. You'll see the indent 
that will go over this ridge right here. And then we have our smaller of our two washers. We have our smaller one and our larger one. Smaller one, dish up. And then we can put that through our spring once we compress it. But right now we're just gonna put our top mount on our spring and compress it down. All right, we're gonna put our new strut through. And we are going to put our bushing, our top washer domed down, and then our supplied nut. And then we are going to tighten it down. One thing to note, this, one, this front stud here, we wanna keep lined up with the shock just to make sure, because otherwise it will not go into the bottom control arm correctly. All right, so our top nut is gonna be an 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench, and then also an eight millimeter wrench to hold the top so it doesn't spin. All right, then you relieve tension off the spring. Take it out, and then you repeat those same steps with the other strut. All right, now we're gonna take our new strut and install it in the vehicle. Same way we took out the stock one, lift up the sway bar, slide underneath. All right, once you get this front strut installed, what you're gonna do is install the other one on the other side before you start installing anything else because you will interfere with some clearance issues if you try to do it after. All right, what we can do now is we can put our upper ball joint back in our knuckle. So we're gonna put it in position, lift up on it, and push down on it and thread our 19 millimeter nut on. All right, and then we can take our impact with our 19 millimeter swivel and tighten that down. Make sure to line the holes up in the grooves in the castle nut and put our clip back in. You can also put our sway bar link back in our knuckle with our 17 millimeter nut. Grab your impact in your 17 millimeter socket, tighten that down. All right, we're now gonna line up our tie rod on our knuckle and put our 19 millimeter castle nut on. Take our impact on our 19 millimeter swivel and tighten that down. All right, once you have the hole in the tie rod lined up with the castle nut, you can install or replace your cotter pin. Take your needle nose pliers, just bend the ends back. And we can also put our bolt in for the bottom control arm. And make sure you put your washer and nut on the back side. That's once again your 19 millimeter swivel socket and a 19 millimeter wrench. All right, so now we're gonna reinstall our two brackets that we took off. We have our 10 millimeter bolt and 12 millimeter bolt. We're gonna take our 10 millimeter bolt back out, put our bracket back over, start that. Do the same thing down here. All right, so we'll grab our impact with a 10 millimeter socket and tighten our top one down. Then grab our impact with a 12 millimeter socket, tighten our bottom one. All right, now we just have our three nuts for the top hat. So it's gonna be our three 14 millimeter nuts that we took off. All right, 
right, so we're gonna grab our 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench and tighten all those down. All right, now you just repeat those same steps for the other side. All right, and that wraps it up for our install of our Bilstein 0.7 to 3.5 inch B8 6112 front suspension leveling kit for our 2010 to 2024 4Runner. And remember, for everything 4Runner, keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.